Hello, Internet Sister Root. I just gotta mention something that was factually false on uh, what Consumer Alerts on CTV and many other news agencies and many other uh, tech articles that are incorrect. No. Windows cannot physically underclock and slow down your computer's processor. That is full of shit. It's never happened to me, and I have 11 year old hardware that I'm reusing. It still runs great. I got some newer hardware that is at least three or four or five years old. It still runs great. One's an i7. I got numerous laptops. None of them have been physically hacked or underclocked by Windows. That is just full of crap. And, uh, it, no, it, it's Windows that gradually slows itself down right to the point of crashing and burning where you have to do a clean install. It doesn't matter how old your machine is. Windows will work on it. It's just, it'll drag its feet because of virtual memory. If you don't know about that, well, there's not much you can do. It's virtual memory. It's how Microsoft designed it in the first place. And it slows down. It causes Windows to slow down. You should read up about it. Microsoft designed it from the start backwards after version 3.1. After that, they designed it, so yes, three, right to 3.11 or 3.12 for the one in China, but whatever. They designed it as backwards after that point. They should have kept the original design, but they should have kept, they should have enhanced it with the NT kernel and all that without relying strictly on virtual memory. I suppose they wanted to do it backwards because they wanted to compete with Unix and eventually Linux after 1991 when it came out. Yeah, they wanted to compete, but they did it fucking backwards. At least with Linux, the virtual memory is not a problem. It only gets used when things get scarce, i.e. RAM. Like, let's just say, if you have 24 gigabytes of RAM, or 8 or 16 gigabytes, it doesn't really matter, or 128 gigabytes or more. Some people actually use disk, you know, discontinued servers to actually utilize everything they can for their machine to automate their home and all that. Some can write their own programs, which is probably better than using uh, corporate software solutions, which can have vulnerabilities that could easily be hacked if not secured, and if loopholes exist. Some have done that. There's even MS DOS home, home animation. Yeah, you can run that in a virtual machine. Or, well, it's also run in anything, but whatever. That requires a whole lot of other shit, but I'm not getting into that because I have never even thought about doing that. Not to mention it's extremely vulnerable. But regardless. Uh, yeah. If you're going to use open source software, it's not going to crash and burn. You can use it on any hardware. Even the oldest, to the brain spanking newest. And it's not going to slow down. It's not going to become sluggish. And it's not going to physically underclock your machine. It's not going to crash and burn. Unlike Windows, which is that one high powered souped up race car that just so happens to crash, or that space shuttle that just blew up in fucking midair for no apparent reason, though, or that rocket that misfired and bang! It's not going to happen. I have never had that happen to me. Hence, I am the only one who has screwed up numerous installs by messing with configurations before I even knew what they were designed to do. Yeah, I fucked up. I admit it. I've done it. That's how I caused the crash and burn. Including stupidly deleting system directories. Real stupid. Anyways. We all make mistakes. If you want to use something better than Windows, if you want to go Apple's route, you can do that. I don't care. That's up to you. If you want to go to the open source route, go right ahead. DistroWatch.org has many distributions you can check up, and they're a lot better. Read about it. Test it. It's what I have blank optical disks, even rewritable ones, which you can full blank afterwards. Don't bother with a quick blank because it's stupid. They have USB drives for that purpose, or memory cards, if you got a USB card reader, or if your system can actually boot off the internal card readers they have, 
or I'll just say card drives because it's stupid because they don't just read, they write. Then you can do it that way. And that saves a lot of time. But if it's just, you'll have to use a USB card drive for that. Or a USB pen drive, whatever, you know. You've seen them or a USB hard drive, solid state disk, whatever. Try it out on that. Run smooth and you like it. Depending on your experience, try start off with beginner oriented ones and work your way up. Or learn your way through at your own pace. There's helpful forums and all that. Besides, the internet's a great breadth of knowledge for that. It's a super library. Make use of it. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. Peace. Just wanted to correct some fucking bugs.